Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to the show on this first, first day of March 2022. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to have you guys here. Now, we're going to get right started. We're going to open up the charts right here and take a look at this. Uh, Russia is, uh, produces a tremendous amount of wheat. You know Ukraine is a tremendous wheat producer. It says Ukraine has earned the nickname Breadbasket of Europe. Rich dark soil, vast wheat fields, and other farm goods. The Russian invasion has cut the world off from this cheap, abundant wheat supply. And we're going to look at this chart right here. Um, Russia and the Ukraine. They produce 102 million tons of wheat every year. The United States only produces 94 million tons. So what we're looking at here is the biggest slice of the pie of wheat production in the world. I mean, Brazil produces 40 million tons, 52 million tons for the European Union. Argentina produces 56 million tons, and the rest of the world together only produces 80 million tons. The United States produces 94 million tons. The only one that goes over 100 million tons is Russia and Ukraine. And, most, and a lot of that, I think, is probably coming from Ukraine. Uh, are you guys ready for $20 a loaf bread? Are you ready to go in to buy some soup crackers and have to pay $10 for a box of soup crackers? Are you ready, you know, your cookies you like, you know, to have with your evening meal? Uh, you know, are you ready to, to, instead of paying $2.49 for that package of cookies, to have to pay like $9.99 for one pack of cookies? Because that's what's coming. Or possibly even rationing. I mean, you might see the shelves bare of, of anything products. People out there do not realize how much wheat they eat. It's in almost every product out there. Is wheat. And suddenly we're going to be cut, cut off by a third of the world's wheat's basically just suddenly gone? Oh my gosh, guys. This is really going to affect the food supply in a very negative way. Uh, reports Ukrainian ports will be remain closed until the Russian invasion ends. And uh, so they're not hauling out any wheat for anything. No grains. Uh, it says grain trade from Russia is also effectively on pause. It says sanctions have ratcheted up to further isolate community-rich Russia from global finance by sanctioning its central bank and cutting off various leaders from critical swift uh, financial messaging system. Restricted grain supplies from the Black Sea region threatens to further boost global food prices that are near record highs. When a time when supplies are already strained with adverse weather and many growing uh, re in many growing regions, so we got problems there with that. Let's get in there and take a look at the markets now. We're going to take a look at the silver price today, and it has made it to 25 bucks. It's up 59 cents on the day. It's it's clear in the $25 mark. Uh, liftoff is what I would call this for the gold and silver markets. You know, people had their chance at cheap, cheap silver and cheap gold. You know, and now I think these chances are evaporating in the wind. They're they're starting. To, we're at liftoff. Hasn't really went out and hasn't really blasted off yet. But it's like the countdown. It's five, four, three, two, one, and the rocket's taken off for the moon. Uh, Nineteen twenty-four. I'm anticipating a ten-year-long bull market in gold and silver coming up, especially silver. A little ways into this, silver is not the not the quickest mover, but once silver gets moving, it's going to outperform gold even. So, hang on tight, guys. We're, we're coming into the initial stages of what's going to be a very long bull market in, in these two commodities, gold and silver. Uh, you know, there's a few other places that look good. Uh, one of the things is, uh, I mentioned, is palladium and platinum. Uh, Russia produces a lot of that, too, you know. And 
And the automotive industry needs it for their mufflers, you know. They can't produce the cars unless they have the catalytic, what's called a catalytic converter. And uh, so we could see price movements on those metals as well. Uh, some of that depends too. Uh, it's dependent because catalytic converters are gasoline engines. We're still an oil-based economy, guys. Uh, but they are making a transition over toward EV cars, electrical cars, you know. They don't have it. I don't think most of them, I don't, don't think, I don't think any of them really have a catalytic converter on them. Uh, I know some of them have dual electric and an engine. They're called a hybrid. They're like half and half. They would might have a catalytic converter. But the all of full electrical car I don't think has any catalytic converter and doesn't need any platinum or palladium or palladium. Uh, let's move on now and take a look at the uh, cryptos, which we're starting to come to the close of the buying opportunity I told you guys about way back when Bitcoin was $68,000. I was saying, hey, a buying opportunity is coming up. Well, we're still in it. It was, though, down like I think 34000 or something at its lowest, and that was the lowest ebb of the buying opportunity. I think it's. I think we're coming to the close of this buying opportunity pretty soon. Uh, I don't think it's going to last very much longer, a month or two. And don't count cryptos out. I mean, some of you guys out there are saying, well, if the Internet goes down, and this has been an argument I've heard so long, if the Internet goes down for an extended period of time, like, like maybe with the hope of it never coming back on, we can only hope. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that because of what it would cause. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin wouldn't be worth much if the Internet's never coming back on again. But then again, you got to understand that they have went in all hog for Internet. And if the Internet goes out worldwide, they've transitioned everything over to work on the Internet. And so we'd be in a big pickle if the internet went out for any length of time. And the internet has so many vulnerabilities. It's amazing how, how many vulnerabilities it has. You know? uh, we always just take it, assume that for granted that the internet's always there and it's always going to be there. I don't take it for granted. I remember a time when there was no internet. You know, and a lot of you out there in my audience remember that time too. Well, there could be a time in our future when there is no internet. And what would your Bitcoin be worth? That is true. But what would the world look like? You might not care. At that point, if went in so whole hog for the internet, if the internet goes down, the whole world might just melt. And so, I mean, I'm not too worried about that, really, because this is why I tell you guys, own both. Bitcoin might become the money of the future if the internet stays on. And it might see massive gains, like unreal, totally unreal. Well, what's happened already with Bitcoin has already been unreal. I mean, there are what's it? What in the hell are they? You can't even see them. You can't touch them. You can't look at them. They only exist on the internet. And they've become worth $67,000. And right now they're, they're over $40,000. Come on. Okay. Well, it's $43,604 just for one of them. But there you go. This is why I tell you guys, own both. <clears throat> Gold, silver, and bitcoins. Or, or cryptos. You know. But if you're going to get other cryptos other than bitcoin, try not to go down too far on the list of those coins, those altcoins. Because a lot of them are going to disappear, and you, your money will disappear with them. So anyway, that's that's what's happening. Uh, we're going to take a look now at uh, Dow Jones, which is down 413 points. Listen, I've been so busy checking up on what's happening over there in Ukraine that I have actually haven't checked on what the Fed's doing. So the Fed's over here doing something. I don't know what they're doing because I haven't checked in a couple days. Uh... But I do know that more and more as these markets start to turn downwards, it's going to put pressure on them to, to do something else other than just say, well, we're cutting, 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 cutting. Because that's all we've been hearing from them for the last how many months? We're, we're going to 
do quantitative tightening and cut. We're going to uh, cut our bond purchase. Pro we're, cut, 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 cut. That's all I've been hearing from them is a, is a very hawkish tone. Well, I think that's going to change. But when, that's the question. And that's when the markets are really going to turn around. Uh, these markets were hyperinflating. And what they've done is they've caused a little bit of de disinflationary pressure on these markets by all of their negative tone coming from the Fed. Anyway, that's going to change. So we're looking at 418 down on the Dow today at 33,473. Let's take a look at oil. 104. Now, wow, guys. Wow. Wow. Almost up 10% in one day. That's almost as bad as a downwards movement in the ruble, which is a Russian currency. Can you imagine if you live over there in Russia right now? Say you get $10,000, the equivalent of $10,000 in the bank, but in rubles, and you live in Russia. What you could purchase with those last week would be $10,000 worth. Right now it's 7000 roughly, around somewhere around that, more or less. You just lost $3,000. Is that going to make you happy with Vladimir Putin? If you lose $3,000 and you only have $10,000, if you're a Russian, you're going to be like, what the hell's going on with my money? What did they do to my money? And they're, the Russian people are not going to are not going to be feeling good about that. I guarantee you. Uh, when they go in, and they have to pay. Well, it's almost like instant hyperinflation. Well, not not really hyperinflation, but instantaneous prices going up on everything that they purchase, and they might be just making ends meet. I don't think they're most of the Russian people. I don't think they're rich. Suddenly, they're going to have to pay thirty percent more for everything they purchase. And then maybe next week it'll go up another 30%. Who knows? But uh, they got this huge convoy headed in toward Kiev. Uh, here it stretches 40 miles long, convoy, heading in toward Kiev. And they've got a, a tr it's all trucks. Trucks full of troops and trucks full of this and trucks full of that. Heading in toward Kiev. You know, I'm going to tell you guys I'm just absolutely sick of it governments. Sovereignty. These are things that come from back when we used to have kings. You know, and it restricts freedom in the world for everyone. And not only that, it causes a lot more. Do you think we'd be having these problems if, if the world was just open and free everywhere, you know? Uh, and there was no sovereignty anymore? The problems that we're having right now? Why do you think we got all these nuclear weapons and everything? is because sovereign states want to protect their sovereign states. It's got nothing to do with the people. We, we don't need the nuclear weapon arsenals. It's these sovereign states that need them. It's the sovereign states that are fighting between one another. Remove sovereignty, and what do they got? They wouldn't need any nuclear weapons. Just pile them up in a big heap and burn them. Wouldn't the world be better off? And they restrict everything that we do in our lives. You want to build build something? You got to give all this red tape. You got to go through. Just leave the people alone. Let them do whatever the hell they want. We don't need government. Uh, we do need rules. We just have a have a list of rules is all that you don't disobey. Like uh, you're not supposed to go out and uh, uh, do uh, evil, vile things, or you would break the rules. That's all you need. The governments just need a list of rules. As far as I'm concerned. Uh, I mean, it's just something that's come from the past that was inherently evil in the past when they had it. I mean, uh, they would pick some guy who was generally a warlord and the most evil, vile person of the bunch who was able to kill the most people with his sword or whatever, and they'd say, you're king. You're, you're Excalibur or whatever. You're, you got the most powerful sword that's able to do the most damage and you're now king and, and, and now everybody bow down to you why why should we bow down to him because just because he's able to kill more people than everybody else 
I mean, and now they make put a crown on his head and they make him king and everybody has to prostrate themselves to him and everything else and do as he says. Why? Aren't people just as good as him? You know, I mean, all the other people in the kingdom, aren't they just as good? Don't they work just as hard? Don't they want to have their families and raise their families in peace and security? No, but he makes himself king and then he decides to wage war against the kingdom next to him and puts his whole kingdom through, uh, through the same thing that we're seeing over and over and over again through history. And it's all garbage. Anyway. Uh, uh, uh. It's something that's come from the past that worked. Maybe it worked at one time, a thousand years ago, back when the world was a very big place, you know, and when they would land on a piece of land and it was like, it was like the whole world, that one piece of land, because, it was, and then they established a kingdom there or whatever, you know, and that was fine. But now the world's got small because we can travel between countries and the globe and, and, and big jet planes and stuff, and the world's a lot smaller place with communications and everything. And this antiquated thing that's come from the past is nothing more than a hindrance to us now at this point in time. Anyway, guys, uh, let's move on here. I'm getting bugged down a little bit. But this is shocking. What's happened to the oil price today is shocking. And it's going to be a big, big, affect the price of everything. It's going to affect the price of everything you buy. We are on our way to massive amounts of inflation. Uh, let's take a look at bonds and rates today. And we're seeing the bond yields are, are falling a little bit. We're looking at a U.S. 10-year at 1.72 and a U.S. 30-year at 2.09. And uh, so these fallen yields, you know, are a sign to me of... Because the Fed's all but pulled out of this bond market. They were the biggest buyer. So now when you see these yields falling, it means that they're buying. Somebody's buying. And I don't think it's the Fed buying them. Uh, I think that it's nervous investors, nervous about the world's conditions. And why they're buying is it's the same reason they're buying gold. They think that U.S. Treasuries is the safest place to be. Ha 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 think it's the safest place to be. It's a bankrupt corporation. It's getting further and deeper in debt all the time. Safest place to be. U.S. Treasuries. Uh, let's take a look at the dollar index. 97.32 and climbing like, a climbing like anything. This shows the nervousness again. They're running toward treasuries, running toward the dollar. Because it is the best of the fiat currencies. But it's worthless. Really, the safest place to be is gold or Bitcoin. But gold, preferably gold. Gold. That's really your best bet, probably. Um, Bitcoin's risky. But you could see some awful massive gains on Bitcoin. It doesn't hurt to just have a little bit put away for yourself someplace stuffed in a, in, in a tin can out in your yard someplace or something you know I mean <laughs> hidden in the ground a little bit of Bitcoin uh, all you need is a is a little slip of, of paper and write down your 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 keys on it you know and it's just even if the internet goes out as long as it's up someplace in the world your Bitcoin is still there and, uh, how long would the Bitcoin, would the internet go out everywhere? I mean, there must be some place it would stay on. Anyway, I'm rambling on a little bit. That's it for today's show. Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys in the very next episode. And you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.